So we'll be learning a few ayats of Surah An-Naml today from ayat number 52 to 56. Um, in these ayats, there is a, a briefly last statement about the Qawm Thamud and then the story of Qawm Lut starts. So we'll do a simple translation and then we'll go into the details. The ayat number 52, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that after the people of Thamud, the Qawm Saleh, they were destroyed, what was the status of their residential or living places? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fatilka buyutuhum, and those are the houses, the houses or places where they used to live. Haviyatun, they are in the state of ruined or empty. What is like Haviyatun? Haviyatun. So the houses are empty. Bima zalamu, for the reason because they did wrong, the people of Thamud. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi dalika, in this indeed, la ayatan, there is a sign, li qawmi ya'alamun, for those people who have knowledge or they no, or they have the understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa anjayna ladina, and we saved those people, amanu, who believed. Wa kanu yattaqun, and they used to fear, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at this point, the story of people of Thamud ends, and now the the story of people of Lut alayhi salam starts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلُوتًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ And Lut, when he said he was a messenger, he was a prophet, and he was in relation to some relative of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the time frame is about the same. So when is Qala in the past when he said Likaumihi to his people Ataatun al Fahishata Do you come, do you commit upon the indecency, the immoral things? Wa antum tupsirun while you are seeing, means you have understanding and you're still doing that. <coughs> Then he further says, أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَعَتُونَ rijala." Is it that, do you indeed come approach the men, the males, shahwatan with the desires of lust, min durin nisa, instead of the women, leaving the women. Balantum qawmun tajhalun, but it is the fact that you are the people who are ignorant. So next ayat is the reply of the people of Lut alayhi salam, Fama kana jawaba qawmihi. So it was not an answer of the people, his qawm, illa except an qalu that they said, akhriju ala lutin, expel the family of Lut min qaryatikum from your township innahum indeed they are unasun the people yatatahharun who basically this is like a sarcastic statement they pretend to be or they are being very pure and they think that we are not pure and they are pure so let's get rid of them expel them force them out of our township so the story continues after that. Now we go in the beginning and uh, try to understand the <clears throat> ayat that 
starting from ayat number 52 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa tilka buyutuhum now fa is so or then after whatever has happened they were destroyed the people of Saleh were destroyed qawm thamud so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after they were destroyed is pointing to the reader or listener that if you happen to be there or see their houses or the places they are lived what was the status of their houses so the word is tilka tilka is used this is a feminine word and it is used if you are pointing to something which is not close to you tilka those or this is a singular thing but we will use for the houses because that is a plural so fat fatilka so that is simple meaning will be that something over there and this is the pointer to the houses of the <coughs> people of tamud now the next word is starts with uh, these letters ba ya and ta and when you make noun one of the meanings is baitun baitun means is a house one place one house baitun okay its plural is buyutun so you make a plural by adding the following changes buyutun last letter ta has to the maz on it buyutun houses then you combine with the word hum hum means them and when you combine them as mudaf mudaf le it will be houses of them or their houses and this hum is pointing to the people of tamud so allah subhanahu wa taala when you combine these two one dhamma goes away and the meaning will be their houses so that's the word in the quran buyutuhum fatilka buyutuhum and those are their houses the pointing to the houses so allah subhanahu wa taala says what is the status of their houses khawiyatun <coughs> can you check it say khawiyatun hal hal is hal okay so fatilka buyutuhum khawiyatun am the word actually let me start with the word kha wa and ya are the root letters and when you make the noun is kha v yatun with the two dhammas by itself the word is kha v yatun khawiyatun means something which is empty something which has been ruined and is of no value it's sitting empty okay now so this is the word khawiyatun now in this sentence this is coming as a hal as a kafiyat as a situation that at that moment the houses are empty so when you present that in the status of hal then you change the last two the mas to two fathas so it becomes khawiyatan fatilka buyutuhum khawiyatan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the, their houses which are sitting just left there because people have been destroyed they have been killed in the state of being empty ruined no value now one more thing is happening the word after that is bi ma bi ma has combined meaning of these two is because simple meaning but in the tajweed when the ba comes after the noon which is the sound of two fathas we pronounce this sound of noon as the sound of meem so it becomes ha we tam bima okay not tan anymore ha we tam bima they were in the state of being ruined because zalamu zalamu is a plural uh, and it is pointing to zalama to do wrong so if you put three fathas is a singular zalama he did wrong if you make a plural you add a waw of plural and just add an alif which is not pronounced 
and in order to pronounce you make this dhamma so it becomes zalamu zalamu is a plural they did wrong the ha the people of the samud this reason because they were disobeying allah subhanahu wa taala they rejected the messengers they planned to kill him so allah subhanahu wa taala destroyed them and then their houses are sitting empty because they were wrong doing people they did wrong then allah subhanahu wa taala further says inna fi zalika la ayatan li qaumi ya'lamun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, pointing to the lead, reader of the Qur'an that in this story of Thamud, there is a sign for those people who ponder, who pay attention, who learn. <laughs> so the word is inna, they are to point it out that this word inna is surely or indeed and its effect is that if there is a noun after that, the noun and i'm going to put it so let's take this noun ayatun is a noun ayatun with the two dhammas means a sign okay so the effect of this inna is on this noun will be it will change this into the state of nasab with the two fatha so it become ayatan <laughs> rest of the things are additional laam before that is laam at taqid which means surely laam at taqid doesn't have any effect so inna is changing uh, to ayatan the words in between is fi dhalika fi means in dhalika means this or whatever is being mentioned or whatever their story is or whatever their destruction is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna fi dhalika la ayatan indeed definitely in this story there is a sure sign la ayatan la mit taqid surely a sign sign for who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning two words here the word is qaumun qaumun means people the people of any okay any people now lam is a lam e jar lam and so this lam is a different this is called lam e jar and this is a preposition and the effect of this lam is that it changes these two to two kasras to the mas and the meaning is for li qaumin for the people whoever those people are wherever they are allah subhanahu wa taala says there is a sign for these people who are those people they are being defined as ya alamun simple word alama means to know and when you put a ya and wuna it becomes the plural of third person present tense ya alamuna they know those who have knowledge those who have understanding only those people take the lesson from these type of stories and there is a sign for them again in the tajweed when you have a sound of noon li qaumin and they have, you have a ya after that then you idgham that and you pronounce li qaumi ya alamun actually it is the word ya alamuna but when you stop you pronounce ya alamun li qaumi ya'lamun for those people who have the knowledge there is a sign in this story in this statement definite sign allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word inna and lam at taqid to emphasize that definitely there is a learning for those sign for those who are learned people then allah subhanahu wa taala says wa anjayna alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun wow means and and the next letter is noon jim and wow are the root letters okay these are three letters so they belong to bab e faala and we are going to make a four letter by adding an alif so this is afala so this becomes alif noon jim wow alif 
the sound of this word is af ala so we have to pronounce the same way so when you pronounce it it becomes uh, an this is uh, hamza an and this vowel is pronounced as a sound of ya or this ja like that so anja anja means to save to protect nijat is from the same words anja when you make the verb faalna we did anjaina we saved here we is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you write down this together that's written in the quran their way anjaina with the ya with the two dots anjaina we saved allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we saved alladhina those people the common words amanu who believed so those people who have believed with the saleh alai salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them and one more quality of these people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning wa kanu yattaqun yattaqun is from ittaqa from taqwa they used to fear they were they had consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and kanu means they were they were those people who used to fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had believed in the messenger and the message so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved those people obviously saleh alai salam was not destroyed and along with the righteous people were protected and saved but rest of the people of the qaum at thamud were destroyed so at this point the story of qaum at thamud ends then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues the next story which is of the lut alai salam here i want to point out the the ayat starts with lutan is qala li qaumihi so the word is uh, full word is lutun with two dhammas in the state of rafa lutun what is making in this ayat there is nothing no word before that to change lutun to lutan and whenever we change two dhammas to two fatas we add an alif there and pronounce lutan but what changed it from lutun to lutan two things you can think of the the previous there is a vow here and the previous story starts with the word arsalna wa arsalna ila thamud so if you take that word here and apply also arsalna we sent allah subhanahu wa taala in the previous story starting with the word wa arsalna and we sent and wow is here means now the second story continues so if you apply this word mahzuf on this one allah subhanahu wa taala says arsalna we sent and this will become the maful or object and lutun will change to lutan so that could be one reason so allah subhanahu and then you can apply any any verb but in the state of hazaf mahzuf which is not in the quran but for the grammatical reason something could be understood so allah says we sent lut and the, what did he say is the qala li qaumihi common words they are repeating one thing just want to point out that this word is is used for the past tense so when in the past qala he said lut said qala is pointing to the lut so when lut said again the word is le qau mihi it's a simple word but because of the grammatical <coughs> reason i want to write it down one more time qau mun is the word qau mun means people okay then you combine with the who who means he and when you combine these two it becomes people of him or his people so when you combine one the ma goes and the final word becomes qau mo hu important thing qau mo hu now add this lam lam ajr and translate this as a two lam ajr will change qau mo to qau mi 
and for the tajweed reason we will pronounce pronounce don't change but for the reason of having two kasras next to each other easy tajweed we pronounce liqau mihi to his people id qala liqau mihi when he said to his people couple other things in the recitation is that when we write down this i just want to write down together li qau and this mim and ha is written this way mihi li qau mihi this ha is written this way when it is at the end the thing is notice is that there is a word after that which starts with the alif and with the hamza ataatuna because of this alif there because of this hamza you have to stretch this little bit longer liqau mihi okay but that's the recitation the next word is that ataatuna here the word is alif ta and ya there are many meanings of this and you have to fit according first simple meaning is to come somebody is coming you say <coughs> ata ata amrullah okay so these are the three letters meaning is to come or to commit okay now we are going to put the grammar of faala to do and if you put ta in the beginning <coughs> it brings the meaning of you and wuna brings the meaning of plural tafaluna tafaluna means you doing or you do okay so we are going to apply this rule on these three <laughs> letters okay so you just apply so the root letters are alif ta and ya <clears throat> so you apply the ta and a wuna ata means to come and this will make it you come present tense and plural now this ya is just a sound so we just drop don't pronounce so it becomes ta tu na ta tu na you come so that is the the verb now we had an alif in the beginning which is bringing the question mark this is alif of istafhamia it makes the statement a question statement so taatuna taatuna you come ataatuna do you come there he is asking lut alai salam is saying to his people do you come or are you coming or are you committing or are you doing something and then he is pointing what is that you are committing the word is uh, fahasha are the root letters and fahasha means to do something indecent fahasha the noun is fahishatun fahishatun is indecent act fahishatun now when you put al before that it becomes some specific act of fahash and al al removes one dhamma so it becomes al fahishatu so important thing is that by itself the word is al fahishatu some action which is indecent immoral is al fahishatu now this word this is a noun is coming as a maful of ataatuna so when a word or noun comes as a object of maful you change last letter the mat we fataha and it becomes al fahishata when you read them together you do not pronounce this alif in the middle and you pronounce ataa tu nal fahisha fahishata one more thing i want to point it out that <coughs> most of us pronounce this as ta ata ata is not the word ata there is actually hamza with the sukun so ta has to combine with the hamza not not pronounced ta it's a ta okay 
The alif is not pronounced. Ta is combining with Hamza. So ata atun al fahisha. Ta he is saying to them, Are you coming or do you come with the indecency or you bring the intent indecency or you commit the indecent or immoral act? But right now he is not telling what is that. In the next ayat he is telling that. Vantum tubsirun. Here he is pointing one more thing. Antum means you, and you is pointing to his people again. The next word is basara. Basara are the root letters, and it, they, in many words basarat and basir and all that. So these are three letters, fala. But you make a babe afala, so it becomes absara. This is the word that is in the Quran. Absara means not just to see something, but see with the understanding, ponder, have some ability to focus about something when you are seeing something. So this is the word. So when you make the grammar of this, you see, then you put a ta in the beginning, and vuna at the end, and alif is not pronounced, but ta has a dhamma, tubu siruna. This is not pronounced, so that's the word. It's not from the basara, but it's from the absara. Absara is tubsirun. Vantum tubsirun, and you see this, you understand that you are doing a fahash, but you are keep doing that. Then he further tells them in the next ayat, what is that indecency that you are committing? Then he again is saying thing, a'innakum lata'atuna rijala. Here, interesting thing is that, uh, there are three words. First of all, alif with the hamza is, as I mentioned, is the alif of istafamiya question mark. Then the word is, is inna, which is separately written this way. Inna. Inna means definitely or surely. And then the word is kum. Kum means you, and you is pointing, it's a plural. And this is the pointing to the people of Luth. So these are the three words. When you combine them together, they are written this way. Okay. This Alif, so Alif is written as this here. Uh, this is in the combination is written this way. Inna. And you combine Kum with that. So in the font, in the writing, three are written this way. This alif, the vertical line is not written, but it is written this way. Innakum, meaning will be, is it that you? Is putting a question mark. Are you sure it is you? Lata'atuna, again, the word lam is, now here the next lam is, lam is taqeed. Uh, the word ta'atuna is the same as this we did there, but this time it has a lam before that with a fatah, and this is a lam taqid, and it means again surely. So he's saying that, is it that you, surely you, lata'atuna, surely you come, or surely you approach. Approach what, or come to what? The word is uh, Rajolun. Rajolun means a man, a male. Rajolun. Okay. Its plural is Rijalun. Males, men. So plural is Rijalun. Man. <clears throat> then you put Al before that. The man. Al will remove one dhamma, and because of the Ra, Shamsi letter, Lam is not pronounced, but Ra is pronounced twice, so it becomes Arrijalu. The word is Arrijalu, the man. Yeah. Okay. Then it is coming as a maful of Lata'atuna, so Arrijalu will change to Arrijala. Okay, that's the word. Arrijala, and then you read them together. 
So, lata'atu nar rijala, so you don't pronounce this alif, it becomes hamzatul wasal. Lata'atu nar rijala, do you come, is it that you coming or you approaching the man, males? And then he is specifying what are you doing with them, the word is shahawatun. Sheen, hawa are the root letters. And one of the simple meanings to have desire, okay? The word shahawatun is the word when you make the noun. Shahawatun is the noun, and it's a feminine word. And this has the meaning of desire of a lust for man. Shahawatun. Shahwa is commonly used, but when you say full word, shahawatun. But this is coming as a maful again, second. So shahawatun changes to shahawatan. Okay. So do you come upon the males or men with the desire of lust? Then he says min dun in nisa. Here the word is an nisa'u. Nisa'un is the female, but when you put the al before that, the full word becomes an nisal. Lam is not pronounced, noon is pronounced together twice. An ni sa u. That's the full word. An ni sa u means the women, the females. Okay. Then we are going to combine these with these words. Dal wa noon. It was one word, and min is another word. We have to combine these three together to bring the correct pronunciation here. So first of all, you come, dun means other, okay? And when you combine these two together, mudaf mudaf so dunun will become duno, and this will become kasra, so combined word will be dunun nisai, other women. When you put the min before that, uh, which is from or any, but these two together can be translated as besides, other than that. And min will change duno to duni. So that is the final word, min dunin nisai. You come upon the man with the desire other than or instead of or besides females. Then he further says, Bal antum qawmun tajhalun. Same similar words, bal means but, antum means you. Qawmin, qawmun means people. The word this time is being used is tajhalun. Jahala, common words, to be ignorant about something. Jahala, to be ignorant. When you put again a ta and vuna, it becomes the grammar of you, do. So, taj haluna, you are being ignorant, you are being jahil. So, he is telling them, you people are ignorant people, that you are doing something fahash. So, they heard this thing. They replied, fama kana jawaba qawmihi. Okay. So it starts with the fama kana. Kana means kana means to be. Kana means was. So fa means so. Ma means not. So not. And I'm going to write down the words separately because they will change. So jawabun is the full, full word with the two dhammas. This means response or reply. When we stop, we say jawab, but the full word is jawabun. Then the next full word is qawmun. Qawmun is pupil. And who hit it or him, and this is who is pointing to Lut alayhi salam. Qawmun means pupil. Jawabun means reply. So if all these words, when we combine together, many things will change there, okay? So 
let's put the gana in between also fa ma and kana kana is a verb fa ma so not and kana will just translate it was and this is a verbal statement and it's going to have some impact also the next word is jawabun the next word is qawmun and who so you start combining first you combine these two qawmun and who so by putting an off by the mudaf mudafale it will become qawmuhu his people so you combine these two first and they will become one dhamma will go away okay then you can combine these two together reply of his people so when you put an of you are making another mudaf mudafale and this will lose one dhamma jawabo and this will become kasra so it become qaumu we will pronounce this again he qaumihi jawabu qaumihi reply of his people but jawabu is coming as a maful or khabar of kana so this will change to fatah so now if you read these together it is exactly same as in the quran even though almost every word was there with the different construct but by the combination fa ma kana jawab qaumihi that was not but the reply of these people what was illa except except what they did these are common words un means that qalu they said what did they say akhriju so this is kharaja are the root letters okay and when you put alif in the beginning it becomes four letters afala afala means afala is akhraja akhraja means to expel force out somebody from his place so that is the word they are using akhraja to expel out if i put the harakats like that uh the word is akhriju but that's a plural so it starts with the singular if you say akhrij last letter with the sukoon on it it becomes a command it's an order if you're telling someone akhrij expel one if you're telling one person expel force out you will tell akhrij if you're telling many people then you add a vow of plurality and add an alif there and you pronounce akhri two sukoon so you have to put a dhamma here to pronounce akhri ju that's the word in the quran qalu they said and this they are telling each other the people of lu akhri ju expel them let's expel them let's force them out let's get rid of them who ala lutin al is the family the word is alun it starts with the again full word in fusa you know words have effect from one, from one to another so the word is alun then the word is lutun okay first you combine these two family and this is lutun So you put an off in between mudaf mudafale. It will be family of Lut. So what happens when you combine these two? The must go to two kasras, and here you lose one. The my standard rule: alo Lut by itself. The word is alo Lut, family of Lut. But it is coming as a maf maful or object of akhriju verb. So that will change this to ala. ala lutin family or the people or, or relatives whoever they are with lut let's get rid of them force them out min qaryatikum standard word qaryatun means a town or a city qar ya full word is qaryatun 
you combine with the kum, kum means you plural, and you are the people of blue. So they are saying kariyatun kum, and when you put an off, combine them, it become kariyatu kum. Min, kar, so, so the word is kariyatu kum, your city or your town. Okay, then min means from. <coughs> Okay, harfejar, harfejar will just remove the ma to kasra. It becomes min qaryati kum from your town. That's how it is written there. Qaryati, but when you join together, this round ta opens up into the regular ta in the, in the font writing, and it becomes qaryati kum, written like that. Min qariyatikum from your town. Let's expel them, force them out from your town. Then they are making a statement. Inna hum. Inna means indeed and hum means they. And hum is pointing to the people of Lut who believed with them, with, the, with Lut alayhi salam. So they are saying, the, the disbelievers of the people of the city are saying, Inna hum, these people. These people means pointing to the people who are believers and who are with Lut alayhi salam. Then the word is unasun. Un ins means a one person. Unasun is the plural. So unasun means people. So what they're saying, these are the people. The disbelievers are saying about the believers. These are the people. Indeed, these are the people. What are they doing? The word is yatataharun. So the word is tahara. Taha and ra. So we'll start with ta, ha, and ra. <clears throat> this means to be, to purify or to to clean something. So we are going to make the so, so word is yata taharun. Okay. So let's try to understand ya here is they third person because of the vuna. Wow noon is a plural. Okay. Okay. Now <clears> that <throat> The, after that, there is a ta and ha, ta ta hara. And so this will become from the word tafa ala. So if we add a ta and a shadda, it becomes ta ta hara. Ta ta hara. Ta ta hara means to purify something, okay? To make something clean. So yata ta harun, they think they are making themselves pure, they are clean, they think that they are the purest people. It's a sarcastic statement. So the disbelievers are talking about the believers, saying that they did for themselves think that they are pure people, they have purified themselves. That's the word yatata, unasun people, those who have purified them, who are very clean. So, and we are, we are bad people and they think they are the good people because they are pure, they are clean, they don't do the things that we do. So the story of these um, continue, um, Lut alayhi salam, until the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls upon them and they are also destroyed. So inshallah we'll stop here. Um, may Allah give us the fear to understand the Quran correctly and ponder upon it and learn about it. صدق الله العظيم <تصفيق>